Thank you for tuning in to Mr. Cliff's Toy Shop. On today's review, we take a look at the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Cyborg. Today, I'll be reviewing this figure in the following categories. Accessories, articulation, design, is it essential to your collection, functionality, and price. Once those scores are totaled, I'll give you my opinion if this figure is a pass or a purchase. So when I first seen this figure, I was excited. I'm not sure why I was excited as I was not a big fan of the Teen Titan series. I simply thought this was a cool action figure. And I think with this hair, this is going to be a pretty quick review. I'm going to try to keep it under 12 minutes. Let's see if I can pull it off. So for accessories, you are looking at it. Cyborg comes with this singular pleat piece, which is a blast effect. And it absolutely looks great. I like the teardrop sort of at the end and the spirals through. And it's connected to the hand, which I like. I feel like when accessories comes this way, it's less likely to weigh the figure down. But mine seems to be a bit bent. Is it just me or this thing isn't straight? See, if you look at the hand, it looks like the hand is sort of crooked. And I don't know if you're able to fix this. This is super hard. And the hand is a bit stiff as well. So we're just going to wrap this up for overall accessories. I'm going to give Cyborg a 2 out of 10. So for articulation, just looking at the figure, I have some concerns. So the head is able to look up barely any. Down. It rotates, but that seems a bit tough to do. Let me just fix this lighting. Not sure. Yeah, I guess it's some pivot. And the head shifts back and forth just a little bit. So with the arm, it's able to extend out about that much. It does rotate here. You have an upper bicep cut turning at this point, not this point. So if you can see that, the brown part is rotating. The next point of rotation will come at the wrist. They are on the ball peg, so if you align them right, you can get the hand to go side to side or up and down. No butterfly joints. Now looking at the torso, you have a higher and a lower portion. So just using the top, he is able to rotate a good amount. The torso does come down that much. Backwards, it seems a bit further. Eh, maybe not really. Yeah, it does seem a bit further. And you do get a good amount of pivot. So the lower portion is able to turn. So you get some good movement in the torso. It's able to go side to side. Forward about, forward barely any. Much more back. So just using the combination of the two, you do get a lot of range of movement. Crunches that much forward, crunches that much backwards. Moving on to the legs, he's able to kick out that much. Forward about that much. Backwards, barely any. You have, I don't like the movement here. Now, Storm Collectibles has showed me that you don't have to have an upper thigh cut to be successful. But the way that this turns, this isn't success. So you do have a turn there. The next point of rotation is all the way at the foot. So the knees are double jointed, bending in a good amount for such a, well, maybe not large, a bulky character. The feet are on the ball peg. They're able to move up that much. Actually, let's fix this. Up that much, down that much. And if you get the ball peg on the right angle, you're able to turn it side to side. You also have toe articulation bending up about that much. Nearly forgot the elbow is stiff, single jointed, bending and only that much. So for articulation, I'm going to give Cyborg a 6 out of 10. So for design, McFarlane did a phenomenal job. I just want to zoom in on the head a little bit. Let's focus the light. They really did a great job with this clear plastic. And if you can look inside, it, it almost mimics that of a brain. And you can see some patterns on the inside. I really like that. And that also continues to his shoulders as well, to his forearms, and then to his legs. So I really like the combination of clear plastic that we're getting. The silvers uh, work very well. The white, I think, should have been more satin or have a glossy finish. It does have a bit of a shimmer to it, but I think it should have been shinier. The eyes painted red instead of a translucent effect like this, which I think would have been super cool, but for a $20 action figure, I really wasn't expecting that. 
And I think this is just an overall good expression for Cyborg. And if you turn around, the back is clean. Some really clean paint apps here. Now the feet are ridiculously big, but they were in the cartoon as well. So I can't fault McFarlane for that. So for design, and I really think that they hit this thing out of park, I'm going to give Cyborg a nine out of 10. So as far as being essential to your collection, for those of you, this version of Cyborg comes from the cartoon that ran several years ago. As I mentioned earlier, I wasn't a big fan of the cartoon. However, I did watch it. And if I remember correctly, there were five essential members of that small Titan team. Robin, of course, Starfire, Raven, Beast Boy, and Cyborg. So he was absolutely an essential member of that group. As far as Teen Titans overall, that depends where you may rate Cyborg higher or a little bit lower. But to that particular series, there is no question that he is essential. This is what this figure is designed after. Uh, so I'm going to give him a 10 out of 10. So for functionality, we normally start with the accessories, I think. Or do I start with the head? I think I start with the head. Let's start with the head. So there are some challenges with the head. There's no reason that this figure shouldn't be able to look up a lot more. He has no hair that's hindering him, no collar, no armor. So this head should look up a lot further than it does. So that's definitely a disappointment. This particular arm continues to fall off pretty much with ease. And the arms overall are a bit loose. Not loose as my Doomsday was. Or not loose enough to where I'm considering taking it back. But it is a little bit wobbly there. Oh, and there go the arm. And I think that they did a good job with the torso. We get a lot more movement than I was expecting. Now coming to the legs, the legs are problematic. And the reason that they're problematic, let's see if I can pop this off. Yeah, this is the reason that they're problematic. If you can look inside, this is the reason that we have such limited range and the legs will not rotate properly. Now it could have been done like this. This could have been on a ball peg system and it would have allowed for it to rotate much more than it does, but it does not. So the legs are an issue. And the fact that this piece here doesn't move, it is stiff and it is stuck in that one position. And this figure does not pass the stand test. Even though he has these enormous feet, he does not stand particularly well. Yeah, it doesn't make sense that his feet are so big, but he's pretty sure that's throwing it off some. Unable to stand, so I'm going to throw this McFarlane stand on and see if that helps out any. And it does help out. So now let's go with the accessory. I am not sure which hand this goes on to. Perhaps it can mount to any of the hands. Yeah, I, I can't tell for certain. I'm just going to go with this hand. All right, so you pull the hand off easy enough. It's on a huge peg. Oh, that is some tight. Okay, I'm going to have to get off camera. Okay, so if yours is anything like mine, you may want to heat that up before putting that inside. I think it could go on any hand. So this is what it looks like. Now, to where I'm concerned, I did mention that the arms are loose. This is heavier, so I was expecting this to fold down, but it's not. It's pretty much holding. Now, another issue with the functionality is that the arm cannot be extended fully straight. And this just continues to pop off. Who knows? Maybe I will send it back. So for functionality, there are some issues. The head doesn't look up enough. There's some looseness in the limbs. The arms do not fully extend. The legs don't rotate properly. So for functionality, I'm gonna give Cyborg a five out of 10. 
So for pricing, Cyborg comes in at $20. That's before taxes. That's before shipping. I was able to pick up mine for free shipping. So with taxes, it came. Let's just round that to $22. So is he worth the price of admission? So let's see what he comes with. As far as accessories, you do not get much at all. McFarlane has to find a way to get us some additional hands or effect pieces for our characters. I do think the one effect piece that we get is really, really cool. Where you have to give it to McFarlane is that they're really not skipping out on design or paint. And this figure surely has its strengths in the paint and the design portion. So for pricing, I'm going to give Cyborg a 10 out of 10. So now is he a pass or a purchase? As I always say, that depends. If you are a fan of that Teen Titan show, then absolutely. Also, I feel that Cyborg is one of those characters to where you may be able to throw him in another line, maybe with your Masters of the Universe with Roboto, or you can find a way to stick him in somewhere. So I'm going to say that he is a purchase. So let's take a look at a few comparisons. Here's Cyborg by himself. Here he is next to Storm Collectibles Raiden. Here he is next to another McFarlane figure. And here he is next to Hasbro Desro. Thank you for tuning in to Mr. Clips Toy Shop.